What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and today we're going to be working on the Yerf dog that we built on the channel a while back for a friend. Uh, this was a, basically we only used 25% uh, of the chassis and we did a double A arm front suspension and a semi independent rear suspension with a 625. Now uh, this guy, this is what he budgeted for and he wanted to add reverse and stuff to it later and independent rear suspension. But we have a huge meetup coming up in, at Turkey Bay. You can go to rbgcarts.com slash events to find out the times and dates and all the information about our meetups. And this is our favorite event of the year. We get to hang out all weekend with you guys. Uh, it's just a blast. The trails are amazing. You can take anything from a yard cart to a mini bike to a full built buggy. You can drive a Jeep on the trails if you like. We would love to see you guys out there uh, with this Yerf dog. He's going to do independent rear suspension and a differential, a player stiff on it later. But right now we don't have the time to do that in our shop. And so what we're going to do is pull this thing in. The 40 series torque converter is really underpowered for that 625 engine. So the pulley keeps getting stuck. So what we're going to do is we got on the horn with Go Power Sports and got a 780 CVT. We're going to build a jack shaft setup just like I did for Gravy Bones. And we might even do a jack shaft setup as well to do the gearing reduction so we don't have that massive sprocket on that swing arm. All right, so this is the operation we got going on. We got it sideways on the bin pack lift. And these bin pack lifts are sick because you can take the extensions off of them. Um, so he was so rich because we never had full time to tune that carb it melted this aluminum on his muffler and i know you would think that would be lean making the exhaust hot but he said he ran through four gallons of fuel in one ride which is insane another problem was this 40 series just can't handle this kind of power and what it ends up doing you can see the belt dust where it's just eating it apart uh, when you get to this kind of power range that belt just can't handle the twisting that happens with that rear pulley outboard meaning it's sticking out one other problem he ran into was the steering rack on this is aluminum and it ended up snapping one of the bolt holes i can't really show it to you how it's sitting in there but you can see the movement in that thing like if the tires is on the ground you can see it more but you can see it's got some flop in it so he really quickly came up with this bracket just to like hold it down so it couldn't come up so we basically need to put a new rack on it and then either upgrade this part that he made or something just to help hold this whole setup down uh, because that rack we use a different rack now and those racks are good as long as you brace them good and we didn't know that because we never had one fail until this one and it actually snapped and turned his wheels all the way to one side and he ran up a bank and flipped it so while ran man was working on the back i took that rack off and you can see what happened where we didn't have it supported from the top, this points towards the driver. Where we didn't have nothing supporting it, all the pressure was going down here. And that's the problem with all these racks, even the steel ones, is this is the weak point. So we got a couple different options. We can, you, I think he built the hold down very well for this. Um, the only thing we could do different is we could cut down these boots some um, and put a locking collar around this to simplify it so you'd basically have two locking collars that it would bolt up just like it did here and then two collars would hold it down like i was talking about on the hot rod go-kart that may be an option too just so it's cleaner but definitely need to replace this rack it is shot Okay, so we got the sprockets laid out for the Yerf Dog. We're gonna do the same setup we did on the 999, which is a jack shaft to get the sprockets as small as possible to give them ground clearance. So on the CVT jack shaft, we'll have this 13 tooth. And then on the opposite side of that jack shaft, uh, where, you know, it have a jack shaft on the CVT, it'll go to the front jack shaft. So this will be on the CVT. Then this 36 will be on the uh, jack shaft this 18 will be on the opposite side and this 48 will be on the axle 
So I gotta weld up these hubs to each of these sprockets. I do actually have to throw this one in the lathe and machine this down because they didn't have the proper one that actually fit this sprocket. We had to go to two stores and one store we had to go to twice to get all these sprockets and they're not cheap. I mean, we have 200 bucks in sprockets and chain. So I'm gonna get these welded up and get this machined up and get this thing mounted on. Randy's getting his front end put back together on the Yerf dog, and this is how we're gonna do the jack shaft setup. This is his swing arm flipped upside down. Got some pillow block bearings. I'm gonna drill uh, some holes for these to bolt to, and how I'm gonna bolt them is a long time ago I ordered, I don't know what you call these, but they're like weld-in threads, and these are half inch fine thread. So we're gonna drill, drill a three quarter inch hole for these to lay in the frame, and then weld them, and that'll give us good strong uh, threads for these pillow blocks so i'm going to measure three inch back for the first hole and then i got to find out the center to center on these pillow blocks and we can mount that and then this will run up to the jack shaft uh or sorry this runs down to the axle this side runs up to the jack shaft on the cvt once the sprocket's on there so with these drilled and these little bungs welded in All right, so here's the chain tensioner that we're working with. We did this piece of flat stock and it's basically gonna pull down on the bottom run of chain because uh, this is a swing arm flipped upside down and we'll have a turnbuckle on the outside out here pulling down so he can adjust it without having to pull anything apart. So we're gonna tack this tab so we can make sure we get it all aligned and uh, then we can start building the turnbuckle set up. So this is the setup we got, and like I said, this is the underneath side of the swing arm. We built this chain, or this uh, turnbuckle chain tensioner. We did like a super beefy mount down there, and all that is is a carriage nut. And a carriage nut is like three times or four times the length of a standard nut. It's for all thread. So we welded it down there, put some heavy 316 gussets on each side. So when you want to tension the lower run of chain, this is the only tensioner we're gonna have on it. The upper chain will have you know, you'll slide the engine jack shaft assembly. So we got this 316 arm going down and uh, got lock nuts back here. It's all super beefy. And if we turn it, you can see it's all super strong and it don't make any clicking noise. That's what you always wanna hear or listen for when you're uh, doing any kind of chain alignment. If you hear any clicking, that means something's off. So uh, that should be good. He can just real quick break loose the jam nuts and tighten this once the chain stretches a little bit.
So what we gotta do now is get this sitting on here in place and make sure everything is turned the right way and find out where our belt is lined up um, and decently tight. Go ahead. A few moments later. All right, so we showed you the broken rack that was on the Yerf Dog. Now this is a Go Power Sports uh, Challenger X rack. This is my favorite rack to use on the market. You can't find anything better anywhere else, in my opinion, for the price point and the build quality. Quality. They're ultra small. I mean, you can see, super tiny, but they're also strong. And you can buy locking collars or make clamps to hold down this side to make it even stronger because these bolt holes alone aren't strong enough. So how we're having to adapt it, and I'll show you why when we're done. Uh, we had to cut down the threads, then I'm gonna TIG weld jam nuts on each side. And then I got to, I've already did this side and it's off center because this rack wasn't, it wouldn't center up in the lathe. But I had to drill this out and tap it to 3 8 fine thread. So we gotta do this side, and then I can show you how we're gonna make the adapter. Not in the thing? No, it's out and about. Alright, so we jumped around a lot because we've had a lot going on. Lonnie's been putting together his deuce over there, or more or less taking it apart. Now he's ready to put it back together with his new V-twin. So that was a diesel deuce. We're stripping it apart and giving the frame to Lonnie, and I'm going to build the diesel deuce 2.0 because we never finished 1.0 with a four-wheel drive chassis. But on this, you saw me putting this rack in the lathe and drilling out these holes and tapping them. So I built this little adapter because this the pivot points between the two a arms on each side let's say it's six inches and if i was just to bolt heim joints on the end of this rack it would have been like eight inches so this adapter has some threaded holes in it and you can adapt your tie rods down so that's all this adapter does and it moves with the rack so i built that same thing before but i just reinforced it with this top plate and then i welded on nuts on each side and two axle keys that basically keeps it from rotating the rack this rack bracket can never rotate side to side and then we also got these lock collars just like i was going to do on gravy bones clamped around it and we're going to build up steel to the bottom of them it's really hard to see but there's a gap under there we're just going to build up steel just a actually we'll grab a scrap piece of steel and lay under there and i'll just bridge it and weld it in so basically there's no way this rack would ever break it could wear out and the only bad thing is we'll have to if it wears out i'll basically have to cut and tap a new rack but we shouldn't have to worry about that so there it all is like i said when you turn it this whole bracket moves with it and turns it and there will be boots on here we're going to push this all the way out and clean all this grid out of there and put new grease in it before we put our boots on so randy's going to bolt his a arms back up and we're gonna make sure, oh yeah, we had the clearance. When we, I made the bigger tie rods, 
basically we had to notch this frame right here and we cut a corner out and welded in this uh, 3 16 flat stock if you can see I haven't welded up under um, but we welded that in because his tie rod was hitting on this and we used solid rod half inch solid rod before and he had actually bent one so now I made them out tubing and they're nice and beefy uh, so that'll never happen again we got a fine thread half inch bolt with some spacers so you know they're crude spacers but they're spacers nonetheless so we're going to turn this all the way this way and we have a half inch hole threaded in this plate but since that's just quarter inch plate that's not enough bite to really give it strength so we put a jam nut on the back side of it randy's gotta hold it down in there while i get it thread it on there and then we tighten up the bolt and then tighten up the jam nut got these lock collars welded on so it's clamped in the body of this we beefed up this mount uh, i mean it's super strong compared to what it was um, you know you can really tell you learned a few things over the years but now if he turns at maximum droop it's uh it's all the way it'll actually go a little bit more right there so you can see it's before it was smacking it because it's right there you couldn't even turn it
definitely still need to tune it like the carb the backfiring and stuff uh this is like a kian style carb squirrel cheeks here uh this is like a kian style carb and not a makuni so uh at the time i didn't have jets for it like i, I only normally keep makunis uh this is like a chinese knockoff kian but we'll get them some jets but this thing it rips like it's pretty fun i was thinking i probably should let randy ride a little bit <laughs> you know it's like when you get when I was a kid, my older brother had to help me put my birthday presents together, like remote control cars and stuff, put the batteries in, and he would always start driving it first. And I was like, you, can I please try my present? He was like, gosh, you baby. <laughs> he was like, my present. <laughs> so I'm gonna let Randy drive it, but it, it feels real nice. Is it on fire or anything? Anything leaking? No. Uh, it definitely needs tuned, it's rich. He melted that other muffler. So uh, it, it feels good. I would want more steering. And like I said, we can just drill holes to fix that. But other than that, it's the steering don't seem as slow as I remembered it. Before I remember you having to really manhandle it. But uh, it's sick though. I really like it. I'm gonna let Randy ride it and uh, send him down the road, player. Listen to Randy having a blast out in the woods. Oh, he came up the hill. Oh, shoot. Look at that zone again. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you liked a update on an old classic. A lot of people like this old Yerf dog, and this was one of, uh, I think, other than my buggy and the twin engine, this was the first bigger build that we did back then. It's been about three years ago, so it's nice to get it back in here and make these upgrades. Uh, make sure to check out the links in the video's description where we've linked everything we used on this build. I'll try to even link the stuff we used back when we originally built it. But if you guys are in the market for a steering rack, that Challenger X steering rack from Go Power Sports is a must. It's super small. It's easy to put in compact frames. So I highly recommend it. And it's a steel body. That old aluminum one was more expensive than the Go Power Power sports one and you can see it failed because of that pot aluminum and they're just not enough wall thickness on the bolt holes so make sure to check out those links we got the 780 stuff down below i swear to you guys the 780 cvt setup over the 40 series on this made it feel like it has 10 more horsepower the thing takes off so hard randy climbed the overgrown super rutted out hill and you guys can't tell how steep that thing is but if you walk it it is like crazy incline and he creeped up it because he didn't know there were so many briars on it he drove right up that hill and had no problem came to complete stops never slipped a belt and just took right off so uh it's pretty awesome to see that that 780 can truly handle some power so make sure to check out those links in the video description and support us and uh i hope i see you guys out at turkey bay we're going to have a blast this year dog will be there randy will be riding it <clears throat> so you can come see it perform uh live in action so thank you guys so much for watching and supporting us all these years uh we appreciate it a ton we love you guys and god bless